All right, so this is one of my favorite topics. We're gonna get into cranial nerves. With your cranial nerves, there's a variety of pieces of information you need to know. And so my recommendation is every time you get an assessment that has cranial nerves as part of the components, then put a little table off to the side that you can refer back to. Uh, so I'm gonna show you the big version of the table, but realistically, all you really need to put, just to kind of trigger your memory, is Roman numerals, names, and then know if it's sensory, motor, or both, and then you should probably be able to figure out everything from there. You should be able to understand what it does based on knowing the type of information it carries and its name. Okay, so let's start with some Roman numerals here. So we'll go one, two, three. If you have a small number in front of a big number, that means subtract. So it's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, small number in front of a big number, 10, 11, and 12. So you have 12 cranial nerves. For each of them, I'm gonna give you a couple of mnemonics. The first set of mnemonics is based on the first letter of their names. So the one that I always recommend, and there are tons out there, you can do a Google search. There are some really dirty ones that I'm not even comfortable saying. Uh, but the one that I use is O once one takes the anatomy final very good vacations are here. Now this A sometimes I show as an S because it's actually technically called spinal accessory, uh, but most of the time we just call it accessory nerves. All right, so that'll give you the first letter of each of them. So again, if you get a piece of paper, do your Roman numerals, do the first letter, then you can name them out. So then put the names for everything. Okay, so with some movie magic, now we have all the names. With the names, a lot of them tell you what they're going to or what they're dealing with. So like, for example, olfactory means sense of smell. So I, the trick I use is old factory smell. So you're basically gonna run into the nose. Then we're gonna go to the eye. So we have optic for the sense of sight. And then we have three for moving the eye. So ocular, trochlear, and then abducens. We'll kind of come back to all these functions with some more detail coming over here on the table. Our trigeminal splits across the face into three branches, facial, it's gonna to go to the facial muscles. Vestibular cochlear, with a name like that, you go to the vestibule and the cochlea. Vestibule deals with balance, cochlea does, deals, deals with hearing. Glossopharyngeal, gloss, if you hear that, think tongue. And pharyngeal pharynx, so we're gonna deal with those. Vagus is my favorite, and we'll come back to that, but that's your autonomic nervous system. Accessory deals with places where you would put accessories. So I think of like where I put a scarf, or a necklace, or a tie. So it's gonna be dealing with the neck and movement of that neck. And then hypo, meaning below, I remember we said glossal would be tongue, it's the bottom of the tongue. So this is dealing with that muscular part of the tongue. So that's kind of a, a general way of remembering their names because they do kind of tell you what they're dealing with. All right, so let's add a little bit more detail. Now remember, a nerve is just a collection of axons and an axon sends information. Well, it depends on which direction you're sending the information for what you're actually dealing with. So you can sometimes be sending information into the brain, that's sensory information. You're providing information about the environment. You can also send information from the brain and out, typically to muscles, so it's gonna be from movement or motor. And occasionally, you have stuff that's going into the brain and stuff that's going out of the brain, and you can wrap them together and make a mixed nerve. And so that's what we're gonna be dealing with in this next column, is we're gonna keep track of if it's a sensory nerve, meaning information coming in, if it's a motor nerve, information going out, or if it's both, if it has technically classified as a mixed nerve. And again, I'm gonna give you a mnemonic for that. So the one that I use is some say marry money but my brother says big, I like brains, but you can use any B body part you'd like, matter more. Now this is gonna give you a lot of hints as to what kind of information you're dealing with and what they might be doing. So if we come up to this first one, so if we're looking olfactory, now we know it's a sensory only. And so specifically the sense that you're dealing with, if you're gonna make like a column for function, it's gonna be smell. Your optic here is another sensory one. So what sense for that one? If it's called optic, well, that's gonna be your sense of sight. Now here we have motor, but it's called oculomotor. So if it's oculomotor, 
probably makes sense, is dealing with eye movements. You have three that deal with eye movements, so let's kind of tease those out a little bit and what makes these different. So around the eye itself, so if I'm gonna draw a really bad eyeball down here, you have some that run straight at the top, some muscles that run straight at the bottom, some that run straight on the inside, and some that run straight on the outside. Any of the muscles that run straight, we use the term rectus. So we have a superior rectus, an inferior rectus, I'll, I'll let's make a nose here so we know kind of what we're dealing with, a medial rectus, and a lateral rectus. You also have some that make a turn as it comes around the eye. So this one hooks around something called a trochlea, so a little trochlea built in here, and it hooks around, and now we're coming in at an angle. And since we're coming in at an angle, we use the term oblique. So this would be a superior oblique, and then we do the same thing down here. There's another one that comes at an angle, so we call that inferior oblique. So as you're looking at all these different extrinsic, the outside eye muscles for moving the eye around in the environment, you're going to have a little trick to kind of put together which one deals with which of these cranial nerves. So the one that I use is LR6SO4, and everything outside of that is three. So what that means is LR, meaning lateral rectus, is controlled by the sixth cranial nerve, which is abducens. So this deals with moving lateral rectus. The SO4 is for the superior oblique. So the superior oblique is controlled by the fourth cranial nerve. Oh, I missed. <laughs> so this SO4 is for the fourth cranial nerve, which is going to be your trochlear. And remember we said, this is what we're hooking around, is the trochlea. So the name actually helps telling you that it's the muscle that hooks around the trochlea. So this one moves your superior oblique. And then everything outside of that is gonna be your third cranial nerve. And so this is all the other eye movers. So outside of superior oblique and lateral rectus. So all of these other ones that we kind of drew down here, except for this one and this one. There are also some on the inside of the eye that we are going to use the ocular motor for. This controls the diameter of the pupil and depth of focus. So let's talk about these two. Pupil size, those are gonna be controlling smooth muscles there. It's involuntary control. You don't have say over the size of that pupil. It responds to light. So if you shine light in your eye, you would see that uh, those muscles constrict to cut back on the amount of light. For depth of focus, that's skeletal muscle. We do it all the time, we just don't even realize it. So when you're driving and you're looking at the taillights of the car in front of you, and then you're switching and looking up ahead to see if you can pass them or not, you're changing the thickness of your lens. One of the best ways to try this out is take your finger, put it in front of your face, and stare at all the little nooks and crannies and ridges. Everything behind that's really blurry. Now switch, look past that finger, and then the, everything back there is clear, but now the finger's blurry. You've done that by the ocular motor sending commands to the muscles that control the thickness of your lens. And so that's one of the other features that's happening with the ocular motor. So it's not just moving the eye in the environment, but also controlling the amount of light and the depth at which you're focusing. All right, so then let's now go to trigeminal. So trigeminal, as we mentioned, is a branch one that goes across the face into these three areas. It is a bow, so it'll have a motor component, but it will also have a sensory component. So with your... Sensory, it's sense from the face. We call these general senses because they're coming from skin. So these are the things like temperature, pain, and touch. So that's your sensory component. Motor component is it has a role in mastication or chewing. So the motor part is chewing which means then you're going to control muscles for mastication. So things like temporalis and masseter. Now we come down to facial. Now again, you're going to the face, but remember this was input from face. Facial is now output to face. So this controls facial expression. And so if you're thinking about components and things that you talk to, it would be the muscles for facial expression, like the frontalis or uh, the uh, obicularis oculi or the obicularis oris. So all of these things that control facial expressions. Now for the Sensory components, remember this is the both. I guess I'll probably do this. We can kind of keep track of what we're talking about here. So that's your motor component. 
So facial, facial expression muscles. Now for sensory, it's gustation. But specifically, oh, gustation, sense of taste, uh, is the anterior two-thirds of tongue. So the sense of taste in the front of your tongue. With your other one-third, that'll come from glossal pharyngeal. So over here, I'll put that in real quick. So gustation, posterior one-third. When you're dealing with any of these senses, we should probably have talked about it as we we're going. I didn't think about it till now. Talk about where that information is going. So when we're saying it's sensory information, the job is to carry that information into the brain so then the brain can process it. So when we send information from the front of the tongue, we're sending it to the gustatory cortex, which is on the insula. Things like smell are going to go to the uncus, which is in the temporal lobe, or sight goes to the back of the brain in the occipital lobe. Um, so when you're looking at, you know, where these are wired to and what their components were, be, would be, you're basically keeping track of what are you carrying information to and from. So if it's sensory, where are, you, where are your sensory receptors and which part of the brain are you delivering it to? If it's motor, then it's Okay, which part of the brain are we originating from, which are was typically going to be in the frontal lobe. And then we're going to send information out to certain muscles so then kind of know those muscles. I forgot something. So I was so excited to get to Vegas because that is my favorite. When we did glossopharyngeal, I only talked about the sensory one. I forgot to show you the motor part. So motor component, and you'll have to add this into your table because I've already erased mine, uh, is the function for, has a role in swallowing. The official, that first phase of that conscious part of swallowing. Uh, Vegas takes over after that when it becomes unconscious. So as you get to the pharynx, then you move into smooth muscle because you don't want to, you know, forget. Like if somebody, you know, called your name while you were, trying to swallow and then it's blocking your airway, not a good idea. So the first phase of swallowing, that's gonna be the motor component for glossopharyngeal, some of the muscles in the back of the pharynx. All right, so now we got vestibular cochlear. I'm getting a little off on where I'm fitting things, so we're gonna be over here. So vestibular cochlear is sensory only, and I did say the vestibule is gonna deal with balance, cochlear is gonna do with hearing. So it actually deals with two senses, so with balance and hearing. So both of these structures are going to be in the inner ear. The balance portion where a lot of that information is going to go is going to end up being at the cerebellum. Hearing goes to the temporal lobe, specifically right at the top of that temporal lobe. There's a, a gyrus right there. We're going to have that primary auditory cortex. Now comes my favorite. So vagus is autonomic nervous system. And it's sensory in both for the autonomic nervous system. What that means is this is the stuff that you're not aware of. It is monitoring the senses inside of the environment, your internal environment. So concentration of fluids, blood pressure, um, different amounts of ions. This is all kind of being monitored by this one. And then also commands to help regulate those things are being sent out through this one. So going to the heart to tell it to be faster and harder if your blood pressure is too low. Or going to blood vessels and asking them to dilate or relax if your blood pressure is too high. You're using this one all the time. You're just not aware of it. So the trick that I like to use is I think of like the city Vegas. You know, the saying is what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. It's the same here. As long as you're doing it right, you don't know about any of it. Now we come down to our last two, which are both for movement. Our accessories, we kind of mentioned before, think of places you put accessories. So it's going to be dealing with movement of the neck. So we would have muscles like the trapezius in the back and sternocleidomastoid that comes around the front. And then hypoglossal, this is going to move the tongue. So again, skeletal muscle here, you have voluntary say over it. So if you can do those cool things like making the clover shape out of your tongue or turning it into a taco or flip it over, that's happening by the commands coming from the hypoglossal nerve. And remember, all of these ones that are dealing with conscious movements, they're going to come from that primary motor cortex, which is on the precentral gyrus of the brain in that frontal lobe. And then they're going to send commands to specific muscles. All right, everyone, so those are your cranial nerves. Hopefully it feels a little bit more organized. And then, like I said, whenever you get your tests or exams, usually what I recommend is at least get these first three columns down and then you can just refer back to it whenever you need to throughout the exam.